everybody, my name is Katja and I'm a furniture artist. This week I got this dresser that is, I thought, okay shape until I brought it home and I realized the corner of the dresser is completely gone. So I have to fix that first. But besides that, it's actually in pretty good shape and I'm going to give it a complete makeover. First thing first, let's remove the drawers and hardware and take this piece outside so we can do the fixing. We will be using Bondo. Bondo has a big odor and I suggest you do it outdoor. So as you can see, this is a very big chunk of wood that is missing. And there is also some loose pieces here that you want to remove everything that is loose first. And we're going to fill all that up with Bondo. So you get Bondo, wood filler, and you get cream hardener. So when you combine these two, everything gets hard. So let's just do it. I'm going to wear a mask. Even though I'm outside, I still like to protect myself because the odor is very strong. And now you mix it up. It looks like a mess right now, but that doesn't matter because we're going to send everything nice and smooth once everything is dry. So I'm going to leave this now to dry like this, and then I'm going to build up some more here. So I'm going to put a little bit of wood filler here, just to make it a bit prettier. Now that we prepped the piece, I can move on to priming it. The reason I'm priming this piece, even though it's not real redwood, is because it's stained uh, using an, some kind of red stain, and that will possibly be a bleeder. So to prevent that, I'm just going to play safe and apply, apply Zinser Primer with Shellac. So as I'm going, I'm noticing that one coat is not going, not going to be enough. I will have to go over with a second coat for complete um, coverage, and that will make sure 100% that I don't have any bleed through. And the reason I I love to apply this primer with the with the roller is because it gives you like a nice smooth finish. Uh, every time I try to use it as a brush. With a brush, it comes out messy and it makes uh, brush strokes and whatnot. So I just prefer to go with a roller. It's much faster and also it's very hard to clean this. So I just toss away the, the rollers once I'm done with it. For the little parts like this, you have to use a brush. And for that, I prefer a cheap brush. That way I can just toss it away. Now that my piece is all clean, fixed and primed, I can move on and I'm going to create this 
uh, keyhole moldings for each drawer. So I will be creating four of these. Uh, I actually like this one the best. I like them all, but this one um, looks that will uh, fit the piece the best. I'm going to get this amazing casting resin and I'm going to mix solution A with mm, solution B, equal parts, and I'm going to pour that mixture into the molding and let it dry for 10 minutes. And I'm going to repeat that four times. All right, and I will leave it this dry for 10 to 15 minutes or until it turns white. Now that it's dry, it looks like this. I'm going to take it out and glue it to the jars. So let's take this out. It comes out pretty easy. And you have this beautiful mold. And it's kind of bendable when it's fresh, freshly made. The longer you uh, let it uh, sit, the harder it's going to get. But now it's pretty flexible. I'm going to use this Gorilla glue. It's messy, but it's so strong and it's so good. And I really love this product. Perfect. Now I'm going to start painting. I will be using Annie Sloan Duck Egg Blue Color, which is one of my favorite colors from Annie Sloan. So I'm using zebra brush for this. I'm going for a kind of like a smooth finish. I'm not trying to create any texture. So I'm just going and spreading paint evenly everywhere. So this is just the first coat I'm going to put, I think I'm going to need two, maybe three coats, I'm not sure yet. For now, I just have this first coat down. And once I'm done with the first coat, I will let everything dry and apply the second coat. To achieve the smooth finish, you always want to use thin coats. You never want to go thick. So as you can see, this is very thin coat and that's probably why I will need three coats, but I will rather apply three coats than have brush strokes all over my play, all, all over my piece when I'm going for a smooth finish. So now we're going to apply second coat and as soon as that is dry, we're going to apply the third coat. So the second coat is almost dry and as you can see here, there is still see-through. So I will have to apply a third coat. It's not like everywhere, just some areas like here and here. And then here is full coverage, but we need um, another coat, another light coat. So after I apply three coats, I let everything dry overnight and now I have a nice solid coverage on this piece. And now, now I'm ready to move uh, to another step. I'm thinking of doing some uh, stamping on the sides uh, and I'm thinking of using this pale gold with this stamp, which is called stamped damask. You guys know how much I love damask. So I'm thinking to do that. These new decor ink pads come like this. 
and I will show you how to use it. When you open, this one is empty. You don't toss this away. And now we are going to uh, fill this using this ink. I'm going to shake it a little bit. And then I'm going to pour it into this pad. When this gets dry, you can just repeat the process. All right. So you are going to put this all over. And now we are going to stamp it. And you have this beautiful stamp left behind. And you want to connect them here. Beautiful. And now you just repeat the process. Beautiful. Nice. Beautiful. That's it. What you can do also with this, you can like light sand it if you want to make it even more uh, like uneven and uh, to give more character. You can put more ink pads on the stamp and make it more uh, solid. You can play with this as you want, but this is just a great way to add uh, something to your pieces. Now I'm going to protect everything using Anislon Clear Wax and Redina with Prima uh, waxing brush. And then I'm going to go over with a black wax and a cheap brush to do some uh, shading around the doors. Once you apply clear wax, your color will, will darken up just a little bit. And you can see here how it's a little darker and here is a little lighter. And once you're done uh, waxing your area, you want to go over with a microfiber cloth or a cheesecloth or a t-shirt and wipe all the extra wax. So I just get uh, black wax on my brush and then I Get rid of extra because I don't want too much. I want to use this as a shading. So first I'm going to go all over this area here. And it's going to give a nice depth to the piece. And then you just go over and pick all the extra. I like to work in sections, but you can apply clear wax everywhere first and then go with the black. I just love to work section by section, but that's totally personal preference. And then I'm gonna go around the edges. I'm just going around the edges to create like some shading and make them little age. I don't want uh, black wax in the middle of the drawer. And for this, you want to really unload your brush of black wax or any colored wax. You just want this shading effect. 
And for the molding, I'm going to put a lot in it. And then I'm going to go around and I'm using a little detail brush for this because I have bigger control over what I'm doing with a little brush. And why is it important to have clear wax first? It's because you can move your color wax anywhere you want it when you have clear wax under. If you put black wax directly onto chalk paint, you will have a really hard time moving it around. So just remember that. So what we're doing here, we're aging this molding and it looks beautiful. And you can put more or less than me, it's totally up to you. So I made a mistake and I got some dark wax where it doesn't belong. So how you can fix this is with mineral spirits. I always have this on hand when I'm working with colored wax. It's very simple. You just put it on the cloth a little bit and you go over it and you get rid of it. The only thing we have left to do is apply some gold gilding wax and I'm using uh, the one from Redesign with Prima, Decor Wax Eternal. It's a nice uh, gold shade. going to apply some on the borders. For this area, it's just easier to go with your finger. One thing I really love about this wax is that it dries so fast. Like you apply this one and next 24 hours, the next day you can touch it as much as you want it. There is nothing coming off to on your hands. So that's pretty amazing because a lot of gilding waxes out there are horrible in curing time. Like they take a really long time to cure. Um, some never even cure completely. I'm trying to <laughs> work here. Oh my goodness, what a little chunk you are. <laughs> now I'm going to gild the hardware and I will be done. This hardware is so beautiful. They don't make them like this anymore. It has so much character and it's just so pretty. Oh my God, that is so pretty. Oh my God. <laughs> it's so pretty. And we're finally done. Here is this beautiful piece. I am blown away by the effect the gold had on this piece. It totally made this piece, like I'm so in love. I love this duck egg color. It's something in between uh, blue and green. 
and I love the little bit of shading I did on the edges and corners. This is a perfect example that you can make a piece a look blended without blending it, just with a little bit of dark wax. I love the stamps. Stamping on the side, it looks like um, wallpaper, like distressed wallpaper. And I just love this piece all together, even, even though I had to work really hard to get it done. This piece made me sweat. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below and subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you next time with a new project and more ideas. Bye guys.